communication with France. They're having a terrible, terrible fire. You probably saw, some of you have heard. Uh, some of you have not because you've been here. Uh, but I will tell you uh, the fire that they're having at the Notre Dame Cathedral uh, is something like few people have witnessed. Uh, when we left, we had a whole group of your great representatives. And when we left uh, the plane, uh, it was, it was uh, burning at a level that you rarely see a fire burn. It's one of the uh, great treasures of the world, uh, the greatest artists in the world. Probably, if you think about it, I would say, Jovita, it might be uh, greater than almost any museum in the world. And it's burning very badly. It looks like it's burning to the ground. So, yes. so uh, <clears throat> that puts a damper on what we're about to say, to be honest, because that is uh, beyond countries. That's beyond anything. That's a part of our, uh, our growing up. It's a part of our culture. It's a part of our lives. That's a, a truly great cathedral. And I've been there, and I've seen it, and there's no cathedral. I think I could say there's probably no cathedral in the world like it. It's a, tar it's a terrible scene. They think it was caused by, at this moment, they don't know, but they think it was caused by renovation. And I hope that's uh, the reason. Renovation, you know, what's that all about? But it's a terrible sight to behold. Uh, with that being said, uh, I want to tell you that a lot of progress has been made by our country in the last two and a half years. Hard to believe we're already starting to think about We're already starting to think about our next election, and it's, uh, it's moving along. We're moving along very nicely. Uh, uh, we've raised far more money than anybody, and not that that's the critical factor. In fact, I was criticized coming up. I was criticized that I didn't raise as much money as Hillary Clinton, that I only spent half. It's actually much less than half, but I don't want to tell her. And in the old days, if you would spend less and win, you got credit. Today, you have to spend more and win. So if I would have spent more, I would have been given a lot more credit. But the fact is, we did spend a lot less money, much, much less money than the Democrats that we won. And I think now we're much better positioned than we were because we've done so much. You know, I used to stand up and say, we're going to cut your taxes. Well, we cut your taxes. Biggest tax cut in history. We're going to give you Anwar. I gave you Anwar. <laughs> That hasn't been done. Everyone's been trying to do that since Ronald Reagan. That's the energy, one of the largest in the world, as you know, in Alaska. Uh, we're going to cut regulations at a level that uh, nobody's ever seen. We're going to get rid of the individual mandate from Obamacare, which we did. We'll do even further than that. That was a big thing, by far the most unpopular thing. And, Obamacare, and uh, we're going to have something after the election, assuming you elect Republicans. We're not only going to save all of your private plans, that's 180 million people, but we're going to give you something much better as an alternative, just as an alternative to Obamacare, much less expensive in terms of premiums, and uh, the deductible will be much, much less. Right now, you have a deductible. They're averaging $7,500, much more in some cases. And uh, people don't get to use it. And if they do, they have bigger problems than the deductible. They have some very big problems. But uh, this has been a very special state. Uh, it's been a, a rare, a rare victory for Republicans, and we almost won it. Uh, one more speech. <laughs> one more speech. And uh, I think they've treated you very unfairly on immigration. I think you've been treated extremely unfairly in the world of immigration. And a lot of things are going to change. But under the previous administration, America's rich natural resources were put under lock and key. You know that. And uh, thousands of acres in superior national forests, jobs and everything else were just taken away, ripped away. Last June, I traveled to Duluth and announced that we would be taking the first steps to rescind the federal withdrawal and superior national forest and restore mineral exploration for the miners and the workers of Minnesota. And we have really done that to a point that, in fact, your great congressman, I'm going to introduce them in a little while. They're here. 
And the first thing they said is that, uh, to protect our security and our workers in the Minnesota Iron Range, okay, the Iron Range. And, you know, I, I opened that up, and we are now — our steel industry is vibrant again. It was dead. It was going to — we, were not, we weren't going to have a steel industry, if you can even believe that. Now, obviously, you need that for military and for protection. You need that for a lot of things. But you need it for military. You need it — we can't play games. We had no steel industry. It was going to die, the rest of it, the remaining little bit. You'd see these massive plants that used to take care of so much of the world's steel, and, and they'd be using a little corner, or they'd be using nothing. And U.S. Steel, USS Steel, and if you look at uh, — well, United States Steel has one, but you have many steel companies. They're adding plants all over the country. They're expanding plants. And they're going to be getting their iron ore right from here. I hear you have among the best in the world, they say. Uh, I put a uh, tariff on the dumping. They were dumping — China and other countries were dumping steel all over the United States. And uh, in many cases, it was a very inferior product, very bad stuff. And we need it for the military. We need it for structural buildings. We need it for a lot of structures. So you got to have great steel. And uh, we get it right from you. And I remember uh, I was here about six, seven months ago, and a man came up to me. And I've been here a lot, by the way, campaigning for your — your great representatives. But if you remember, Tom, a man came up to me, and he was crying. Strong man, big, tough guy, but he was crying. And he said, President Obama took our life away when he closed the range. Just those words. He said, took our life away, took our blood. And uh, you gave it back to us. And uh, that's really moving along rapidly, and it's uh, — a lot of great things are happening, a lot of great things. But I, I never forgot that statement. You were standing with me, and I never forgot that statement. Today, unemployment in Minnesota, because of your federal government policies that I have been very insistent on, is down to uh, the lowest level, I think, that you've ever had, 3.1 percent. And jobless claims in Minnesota have reached their lowest level in 22 years. We have Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota has added more than 7,500 brand-new mining, logging, and construction jobs, which nobody expected. If I would have said that, Prior to the election, everybody would say, oh, that's terrible, what he's saying. It's uh, an exaggeration. That can't happen. We're going to lose those jobs. Well, 7,500 brand-new mining, logging, and construction jobs. Thanks to our tremendous tax cuts, the biggest, Minnesota families are saving more than $5 billion on their 2018 tax bills. Five billion. <laughs> And 1.2 million Minnesotans have seen a reduction in their utility bills — think of that — as a direct result of the tax cuts alone. That's not to mention all of the other things that we've done. 1.2 million Minnesotans. And the average Minnesotan has seen an annual income gain of more than $1,700 since my election. So you're up $1,700, and some are up tremendously more than that. The total number of new business applications in Minnesota has skyrocketed uh, — skyrocketed to almost 20 percent. And that's just in a very short period of time. It's been really pretty amazing. It's been pretty amazing. And I want to uh, introduce uh, Secretary Steve Mnuchin, who's here with us. Uh, Steve, wherever you may be, Steve. Treasurer Jovita Carranza. And I'll tell you, Jovita, who's been with us from the beginning, she liked Trump early on. Yes, very I early did. <laughs> Before it was fashionable. Before. And she's done a great job as your treasurer. And now she's moving over. Linda McMahon is going to be some doing something very exciting for us. And uh, Jovita is going to be taking. Linda McMahon's place at the Small Business Administration, and you are going to do a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you very much.
And Jovita will be sitting, actually, uh, on the Cabinet. It's a Cabinet position. Uh, in some cases, we have a choice. I had a choice. Do I put her in the Cabinet or not? That was one where it was my decision, and that decision took me how long? About two seconds to make, right? About that second. She's Thank on the God. Cabinet. Then you're going to do it. <laughs> oh, it's always nice, right? The Cabinet is the Cabinet. It's yeah. pretty good. So that's good. And uh, Representative Tom Emmer, thank you very much, Tom. You've been so And Bob Nuss, you know, put this whole thing together and worked so hard with your family, your great family. And Bob has been a friend for a long time. And uh, what's really impressive is this room is packed, but outside yes. you could pack this room probably 20 times over. You have a lot of people out there, Bob. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Please, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you much, Mr. President. And uh, I'd like to formally welcome you to Minas Burnsville, Minnesota, and uh, home of the uh, I can't I can't list all the sports teams, That's so I true. better not. <laughs> Somebody get some good ones. Yes. Some good ones. Anyway, we're very happy that you're here and on behalf of our all of our employees at our Burnsville operation. And my family, we welcome you to, uh, to our facility. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. much. It's really great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, I, I, would, I would just add that uh, the setting, this shop was just filled with work just a few days ago, mm -hmm. a couple days ago, and it was engines down, transmissions, loaders work, excavators. And when we came to the employees and said, what do you think? Wow, what, the President of the United States come to visit us? Yeah. Well, we, uh, we, we sell Mack trucks and we sell yeah. bubble construction equipment. Right. And what a better setting to have a Volvo loader yeah, and a Mack yeah. truck. And these two represent everything that builds America and moves America. That's good. That's good. I love that. I love that. I've, I've been on many a loader. I've been on many a truck. People don't know that about me. It's, I guess they do, actually. Otherwise, uh, this, the Fifth Avenue stuff doesn't play nearly as well as that, I will tell you. I've been on many, many a truck. And uh, between Volvo and Caterpillar and John Deere and so many of the great companies. But uh, this is a real beauty and considered a very High-end uh, loader. It's great that you do that. I, I want to say that today is tax day that we're celebrating, okay? Tax day. So, uh, and we're getting historic tax relief. That's the good part. Historic. And, you know, over the last very short period of time, we passed the Tax Cuts and the Jobs Act which really, we don't talk about the Jobs Act, but it's made a tremendous the number of jobs. We have over 6 million new jobs in this country. Nobody would have believed that was possible. That's a number that, if I would have said that also, nobody would have believed was possible. And it's the largest package of tax cuts and reforms in American history. We got something done that's truly historic, largest in history. Over 80 percent of American families now are receiving that big tax cut. And it's very interesting because I, I have an article here from one of the newspapers. That's uh, one of the interesting newspapers, the very fake New York Times, see? <laughs> and they must have made a mistake. I'm sure these writers will be fired very shortly. But they said in, uh, in the article, face it. You probably got a tax cut. In other words, they're really pretty upset. You could tell where they're, they're coming from, right? Face it, you probably got a tax cut. That's the headline. Then, if you're an American taxpayer, you probably got a tax cut last year, but there's a good chance that you won't believe it. Or, putting it differently, there's a good chance that you don't believe it. And they go on to talk about the fact that people have really benefited, and some people don't know it. Many people don't know it. A lot of a lot of businesses know it because they're the ones that are supplying the jobs. And because of the tax cuts, because of the big companies who are able to bring back money into the country, uh, tremendous things are happening with respect to jobs. So 
We lowered income tax rates across the board, right across the board. Over 80 percent of the American families, as I said, get a tax cut. And the typical family earning 75000 is saving more than $2,000 of their income. So they're picking up $2,000 every year because of this. But many are picking up much, much more than that, depending on the situation. Uh, we increased uh, productivity all over the board, lowered income tax rates across the board. We doubled the standard deduction for everybody. That's a doubling of the standard deduction from $6,500 to $12,000 for individuals, and from $13,000 to $24,000 for married couples. And if I'm wrong on any of these numbers, Steve Mnuchin, our Treasury Secretary, I'm sure will — he's not shy. He will change it. He will call me out, right? But I think uh, we're going to get it exactly right, Steve. We doubled the child tax credit. These are things that a lot of people — and that's possibly what the article is saying. I didn't read the rest of the article, frankly. I read the headline. I was so shocked to see it. You don't want to delve too much into the New York Times, because nothing good comes from the New York Times. <laughs> we doubled oh, — that's good. Such — such fake news, such phony stories, it's unbelievable. But there was one that sort of — I couldn't believe. We eliminated Obamacare's individual mandate, as I said. We eliminated the very unfair — this is something that I think is a tremendous thing for people. Uh, you have children, and you love your children, and you want to leave your farm or your small business to your children, but you can't because of a lot of reasons. They don't have the money, the business. Maybe it's sort of asset-rich, but not cash-rich. and. You, you just — you worry about it because you know they're going to lose it, because they're going to go to the banks, they're going to borrow money, the banks are going to end up owning it. Happened thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of times. So we virtually eliminated the unfair estate tax or death tax. We eliminated it for small business and small farms. Right? So now, if you love your children, which most of you do, but not all. But if you love your children, seriously love them, you can leave your farm, you can leave your small business, you can leave it to your children, and they won't have to borrow money. They have no tax, and that's good. And if you don't love your children, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Just disregard the statement that — but the death tax or the estate tax, as they call it, is uh, now gone for your smaller businesses and farms and things. And uh, that's a tremendous thing for your kids who could — I mean, seriously, they were going out borrowing money and uh, borrowing at a, at a tremendous disadvantage. They hadn't borrowed before. And it, it's really — it's tragic what had been going on. We were able to get that out, something nobody talks about with respect to what we got in the tax cut and jobs bill. To promote American jobs, we lowered the business tax rate from the highest in the developed world to one of the most competitive, one of the lower — one of the lowest, in many ways, we — we took it down to 21 percent. And I, I think one of the reasons that we're doing so well is we brought that down. And you could say any number. I mean, because, Steve, it was really a combination of numbers, depending on who you were. But you could say 40 percent, 41 percent, 38 percent. We brought it down to 21 percent. And that's a tremendous uh, advantage. And those people are going out hiring all the people, building new jobs, uh, expanding. A uh, very big thing is you couldn't get your money back into the country. And we came up with a plan where you can bring — where they can bring billions and billions and billions of dollars back. And that's what's happened. And they're now investing it in the United States instead of investing it in other countries. We also lowered the taxes on small businesses that pay their taxes through the individual returns, which was a very big deal and was actually very complex, very hard to get, and we got it. So the small business, we lowered the tax. And to promote investment in low-income and distressed communities, we created tax advantages and — that you wouldn't believe — where people have an advantage, they have an incentive to go and invest in small communities, where, in many cases, you have a lot of real problems and tremendous unemployment. We created tax-advantaged opportunity zones. Tim Scott helped us with that from South Carolina and so many other senators. We were really — it was really a great thing. Nobody thought we could get that through, and we got it through. So we have low-income and distressed communities, 
and they're getting a tremendous incentive to have a lot of money go into those communities. And it's having a very, very big effect. It's been great. We promised that these tax cuts would be rocket fuel for the American economy, and we were absolutely right. More than 6 million American jobs received uh, pay raises. People are, are receiving pay raises all across the country. And, you know, that really is a great thing, because for 21 years, if you look back — I used to say this during the campaign two years ago, a little more than two years ago, uh, I'd talk about people made more money 21 years ago than they made today. That was two and a half years ago. And I said, how is that? And they'd worked two jobs and even three jobs, and they did better 21 years ago than they did two and a half years ago. Well, now they're getting money, and uh, it's, it's really happening at a very, very fast pace. And that's a great thing. And business owners like it, too, because they have people, they want the job. One of the things you get, though, as an employee is you now can go around and and look, it's choice. Like, we got choice approved for the military with doctors. We got choice where, if they have to wait online, they go to a private doctor, and we pay for it. And, number one, it's great for the military. And, number two, we believe it or not, we save a lot of money. We save a lot of lives. People were waiting for three, four, five weeks to see a doctor. Now they go immediately out, they see a doctor. They've been trying to get that for 44 years in the military. They never were able to get it. Well, you also have choice with jobs, because now, the economy is so great. We're doing so well. Maybe as good as it's ever been. I mean, it's, it's incredible what's happening. We're rebuilding so much. We're rebuilding our military, but we're doing things that people are amazed at, that we're the envy of the world. Every time I meet with a president or a prime minister or a head of a country, almost every time they come in and say, congratulations on the economy of the United States. We're trying to follow you. We're trying to cut taxes. But hasn't worked anywhere nearly as well. Uh, we're in massive trade negotiations, as you know, because uh, our farmers haven't been treated properly for many years. In fact, uh, Bob was telling me, really, for many years that's been going on, where the farmers have not been treated uh, well. For 15 years, you can go back, and it's just a graph downward. Well, we're changing that. You wait till you see what's going to happen. So we'll see if it all works out with China, but we're doing well in the negotiation. Uh, it's very uh, comprehensive in the sense that it's a very complete negotiation. We're talking about theft of intellectual property. We're talking about so many other things. But we're also talking about the farmers and the ranchers and people that have not been treated fairly by, really, the world. But they haven't been treated by the people that sat in this seat, the presidents and the representatives of the presidents, because other countries have taken advantage of us. If you look at the European Union with the barriers they have to agricultural products and cars and so many other things, but the agricultural products, they barely take our agricultural products, and yet they can sell Mercedes-Benz and they can sell anything they want in our country, including their farm products, and it's not fair. Uh, and those days are changing rapidly. They understand it. We had, on average, a loss of $160 billion a year with the European nations. If you look at uh, Europe and take a look at what's going on with Europe and how badly we've been treated for so many years, and I talk to them and I say, fellas, it has to change, it has to change. And, you know, I said, frankly, look, if it doesn't change, we're going to tariff all of your cars and everything else that comes in. You can't treat our farmers that way. You can't treat our people that way. And I think, uh, you're going to be very happy. You'll be very happy. I want to uh, finish off by saying the small and independent businesses have invested an additional $35 billion in new equipment and facilities since I signed the tax relief law. And new venture capital deals have totaled nearly $165 billion. Uh, cyber and 5G I think will be coming out to your area pretty soon. You know, you've been treated very badly by past administrations in terms of the Internet, in terms of getting access to the Internet and everything else, and uh, we're making it a priority. We call it Rural America, but Rural America is a big place, and it's very red on a map. You know, when you look at those maps from the election, there's a lot of red, but we're getting a lot of Internet, a lot of, a lot of Internet access. New venture capital deals have totaled nearly $165 billion, and after tax cuts, 
Unemployment dropped to the lowest rate in more than 50 years. And you've heard me say it many, many times. We've had uh, the lowest rate in history for African Americans, lowest rate in history for Hispanic Americans, lowest rate in history for Asian Americans. And women are the lowest now in 65 years. And soon, I think that'll be in history, too. Uh, it's really been pretty amazing. The, uh, the numbers of uh, blue-collar jobs have recently grown the fastest rate in more than 31 years. So that's, you know, what we're talking about. They can talk all they want about socialism. All socialism is, is a method into the poorhouse. You know, uh, socialism is not so easy to beat when an economy is really doing well, like ours. We probably have the best economy. We may have the best economy we've ever had. We have the highest stock market. I think we've created a stock market record 38 times or so. It might be more than that, but 38 times we have a record stock market. And that's good for everybody. You have 401ks and you have so many other things. These are the usually the big public companies. But we've created a tremendous stock market. People are making a lot of money. They're setting records to themselves. The wives or the husbands are coming home and saying, whoever runs the 401k is a total genius. Darling, you are brilliant. You are brilliant for 20 years. She or he has been criticizing her or him, and now all of a sudden they look like financial geniuses, so it's good. Some of those 401ks are up 60, 70 percent, so it's really something great. And these things don't happen by accident, and it can all go away very quickly. You put the wrong people in office. Everything that I've done or we've done as a group, we have some great, really tremendously talented people, and everything that we've done can be undone, and bad, bad things can happen. Uh, I think Norm Coleman, somebody told me Norm Coleman's here. Where's Norm Coleman? Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> you know, as an example, we just uh, recently, as you know, uh, we, the Golan Heights, uh, we took care of that. And that's been under study for, what, almost 50 years, I think. 52 years. 52 years. And we did that, and that's very important for the security of Israel. And, of course, Jerusalem moving the embassy. Not only moving it, I also built it. We got it built. We got that built. And uh, we got that built for a little less. They thought it was going to take a billion one. I got it built for $490,000. And they said, how do you do that? Well, we had a better location. Uh, Norm knows that. We ended up that we wanted to buy a very expensive piece of land that was in a bad location. I said, don't we have something better than this? And our ambassador, David Friedman, did a great job. He said, sir, we actually have a building that's in a much better location. Why don't we renovate it and make that the embassy? We did it in about four months. And instead of spending $1.1 billion, we spent less than $500,000. We're using all Jerusalem stock. And it opened four months later. We do many things like that. You just don't read about it. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of other people later. But I think what we'll do is maybe we'll go around the table a little bit, and we'll say hello to your, uh, your friends and some of the folks that have done a fantastic job for Minnesota. And again, I want, to, I want to reiterate something that's different from what we're talking about today. But I think you've been treated extremely unfairly with respect to immigration. Extremely unfairly. We're going to change that. We're changing that. Please, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is um, Carlos Gazatua. I'm the president for Sergio's Family Restaurants in Miami, Florida. I, our business has been in business for over 44 years. Um, I'm third generation running the business. It's a woman-based organization that started 1975. And now we currently have over 650 employees in just South Florida. Yeah. I want to tell you that the tax cuts are working. Here's what we're doing. We're investing in equipment and technology. We've created jobs in our corporate infrastructure to create a franchise system and for our stores. And today, I am proud to announce with you that we'll be offering 401ks to all of our employees Great. tomorrow. Wow. 
we are doing what the tax cuts were meant to do as small business, to compete against big business, invest in our people, invest in growth. And to the right of me is my first, Manny Rodriguez, our first franchisee, who signed a development deal to do 25 stores in the next several years, adding hundreds of jobs to South Florida. As Carlos said, my name is Manny Rodriguez, and uh, before anything, thank you for letting us share our story and for everything you've accomplished since you've taken office. It's been amazing. Uh, we were, I'm a son of Cuban immigrants that fled Cuba in the early 1960s, uh, and thanks to this country, here we are. Uh, we, thanks to the strong economy and the tax cuts, our employees have, are benefiting from higher wages, bonuses that they weren't able to receive before, uh, benefits that they weren't able to receive before. We as a company are, have currently two restaurants out of the 25. We're currently building three more, but thanks to the tax cuts, that expansion is gonna accelerate and hopefully soon we'll be able to create an extra 500 jobs. Right. Thanks, Sue. Thank you, Manny. Thank you. And I'll bet you that the one-year expensing has been one of, the, one of the great things. You know, that's something that nobody talks about, but it's, to me, it's one of the most important elements of what we got to prove. Nobody thought that would be possible, but the one-year expensing has been uh, very special. Yeah. Uh, Tom Emmer, and perhaps you could say hello to and introduce a couple of your uh, very good friends that are here from Congress that have done a fantastic job for other parts of Minnesota. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I will. I was going to say uh, thank you for caring about Minnesota and making this your third trip to our great state in just the last year. Thank you for putting America and Americans first. We always appreciate that. Thank you for your leadership in working with Republicans to pass the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Thank you very much. And I want to say I'm here because I got the opportunity to work with you and get it passed. I know I have two new members over there that would have voted for this if they had the opportunity. Jim Hagedorn from Minnesota's 1st Congressional District and Pete Stauber from Minnesota's 8th. Mr. President, I think uh, people forget that it was a little bit more than two years ago that economic growth in this country was anemic. It was less than 2 percent. Americans were being told to get used to it and that our better days were behind us. Then came your administration that eliminated $33 billion in burdensome federal regulations and re yeah. in Congress that teamed up with you and your administration to pass the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Over the first nine months of this administration, your administration, our economy is now experiencing strong growth, the lowest unemployment in a half century. Americans are confident again. Americans are optimistic again. And in your words, Mr. President, America is winning again. Thank you. go on and on because you've got great entrepreneurs from all across the right. country that can talk about what was misrepresented during the campaign last year. They talked about the Tax uh, Cuts and Jobs Act as being a gift to the wealthy corporations and upper income Americans. The ones I heard complaining were the upper income wealthy Americans saying it just cost me a whole bunch of money. But you know what, Mr. President? They're making more money. Middle class America is making more money. They have more take home pay. And we now have more jobs available in this country because of your policies than we have people to fill them. We got a lot of work left to do. The health care uh, bill is one I can think of. And on the tax uh, cuts, we still got to eliminate the, uh, the Cadillac tax and the health care tax. And we've got to, uh, we got to take care of the medical device tax, make them permanent end the individual tax cuts that we got to make those permanent. But a great start, and thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. 
And we will always be protecting pre-existing conditions. Remember that. That's uh, number one. Very, very important. Very important. Okay? Please, Jim. <clears throat> Hey, uh, my name is Jake Bolden with Liberty Landscape Supply. We're located in Jacksonville, Florida. I am the general manager of one of our retail locations. I have over 13 years industry experience, <clears throat> and because of the uh, tax reform, our owner Mike was able to bring uh, me on board uh, with specific goals to expand our business presence in Jacksonville. And during my short four-month tenure with Mike, We've been able to, um, at, at, at my location, we've increased the number of employees from seven to 15. We have seen um, a 102% total revenue increase over the same period last year. And we've also invested 170,000 in capital investments, uh, new trucks, uh, machinery, um, stuff like that. Um, and both Mike and I are extremely excited about the direction of our company and the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us, Mr. Yeah. President. We appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here today, and uh, and and thanks to the Tax Cut and Job Jobs Act for uh, being able to hire more Jakes. Uh, that's really what we're looking forward to, to being able to do. Um, I originally uh, started or bought this business in 2007. Um, had one employee. Uh, we've been fortunate to grow over the years. Of course, it's been difficult and challenging. Uh, but uh, at the time that the, um, that the act was passed, we had 31 employees. So this is back in December of 2017. Uh, we have 40, well, I should say, um, uh, as we were driving here today, our 50th employee accepted the position. So um, we're making. great progress towards continuing to add jobs here in America. Uh, we um, have invested um, in a number of new trucks. We bought our first tax cut truck in February of last year. Uh, we have, um, thank you. That's good. That's a very good map. We've since added two more tax cut trucks, and uh, Bob and I have an appointment after this sure. meeting to talk about more trucks. So he wasn't going to let me out of here without that. Um, we uh, uh, lastly, just on Friday, Mr. President, we received our, our, our very first, uh, we were awarded our very first multi-million dollar contract, um, and it is, uh, the performance bond is guaranteed by the SBA. So uh, we've been able to kind of benefit from a bunch of the different initiatives that are, that are going on during your presidency. So thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Good luck. That's great. Thank you. Great. First of all, Mr. President, I just want to thank you for taking the time to come to Minnesota and letting us truck and equipment host this awesome opportunity. Um, even with the snow on the ground, hopefully you're <laughs> finding it comfortable. Um, well, I'm Megan Brockway, and I am the Human Resources Manager here at Nuss Truck and Equipment. I've been with the Nuss organization for five years and find it very rewarding. The Nuss family and organization is fantastic to work for. It's a great place to work. Um, have two young kids at home, so some of the stuff that comes along with the Tax Cut Act has really impacted my family. Um, born and raised in Minnesota, live in small town America, population of 3,000, um, so definitely have seen some real impacts from this. Um, working in human resources, I get the chance to work firsthand with many different employees and their families and hear the different stories. Um, you know, one of the main things that I can acknowledge from when they first got their checks after the um, 2017 Tax Cut Act came into effect was their take-home pay. Seeing that disposable income, you know, seeing that they would have a little bit more to spend on things that they may have otherwise not been able to afford. So that's been really great. And as a company, NUS was able to give all employees in 2018 um, a bonus. Regardless if they worked there for a day, they still received a bonus. So that was a really neat thing. And just to hear firsthand from the employees what they were able to spend that money on. You know, a lot of people would say that they were able to have an extra great Christmas with their family, um, maybe donate more to charity, invest in their kids' college expenses, um, maybe 401k, you know, up that contribution a little bit. So it's been really great to see what people have been able to do 
with that extra money that they're getting and just to see how it benefits the NUS organization as well. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. And Bob is a great man to work for, right? And his family. Good. Good. Thank you, Mr. President. I, uh, again, uh, it's great to have you here and uh, talk about our business and to talk about the story. At, uh, uh, I've been in the industry 50 years this year and uh, started uh, working at my dad's dealership in Rockford, Illinois back in 1969 as a parts manager. I graduated from college at uh, St. Cloud State University here in Minnesota. Yeah. The economy in Rockford, Illinois, where we lived in, in 73, the economy was getting um, very uh, slow. And as you know, might know, Rockford was the second largest machine tool center in the world after the 50s and 60s. And you saw the degradation of the jobs that left and the factories that are boarded up. And when you combine that with the uh, location we had, when my dad wanted to retire, I said, we're going to come to Minnesota. And uh, I came up here, managed the, so we're continuously over 50 years in the, in the business. Uh, from 59 when my dad became a dealer, more than 50. And anyway, uh, what we did was I bought the dealership. I came up, there was a, a dozen employees and uh, 1979. And today we have over 350 employees in eight locations. Right. And uh, we're, we're, about as, as Megan said we talk about the 401k and trying to bring incentivize our employees uh, and like in a, a lot of businesses wait for somebody to be in there a year or so and they're limited what they can put in we established the auto enroll and we went from 65 percent uh, participation to 98 overnight which um, when you look at all the employees, I can remember when that 401k for all of our employees, when it hit a million dollars, I thought, wow, we're, well, it's over $23 million wow. today. And it's our employees' money. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Please. Oh. My name is Chris Bonvino. First of all, thank you, Mr. President. Thank this you, is Chris. quite an honor for us. Uh, this is Ross Cooney, um, operations manager. We're with Gemini Athletic Wear. We are the one of the largest hockey jersey manufacturers in the country. Um, I, I started the business at uh, 25 in, in my apartment, and uh, we've grown significantly since. Um, the tax cuts, we, we, and we have to ask our accountants really to explain them to us. We're not Steve Mnuchin's, we, we, we do our best. But at any rate, um, we looked at it and you know, we said, we're gonna have a quite a bit of money left over. It was substantial for us. Those crumbs that they pejoratively talked about yeah. really were not crumbs to us. That's right. Ross could probably agree to that, but um, Ross is uh, 32 years old, very good at what he does. He's been with me for six years. He is, because of the, the tax break, the tax reduction that we got on, on the amount we pay, he's gonna buy his first home. And uh, I'm so proud as a, as a business owner. Um, you know, you... That's great. Thank you. Uh, yes, hi, I'm Ross Cooney, uh, operations manager for Chris Bonvino. Um, immediately, thanks to the tax act, uh, Immediately saw bigger paychecks um, with the cuts to small businesses. Uh, received a significant pay raise uh, as well as bonus, and be living the American dream soon. Uh, being a first-time homeowner, so thank you very much, thank Mr. You, President. Ross. Thank you, Ross. Mr. President, I just want to say I remember during the campaign sitting around tables like this and listening to business people and. You promised when you were elected that you would deliver tax cuts. You promised economic growth, and thank you. You've delivered on those promises. Uh, I guess it's my turn. Hi, uh, Mr. President. Thank you for um, inviting me here. I'm um, actually quite humbled to be here, to be honest with you, listening to all the stories here. My name is Christian Ranker. Um, I own a very small corner market in Rustell, Pennsylvania. That's about 45 minutes southwest of Pittsburgh. 
Um, I just have one location. Um, I have about four to five employees, including myself. Um, so, and the employees that I do have are, um, majority of the time are single moms, um, college students, high school students, things like that. Um, pretty, pretty much knowing that um, my business is not so much a career as much as I get to um, pretty much train them as far as like customer service and actually learning certain things that we just take for granted we think people know. Um, the location I'm at has actually been, there's always been a corner market or a company store there since the 1800s. So when, uh, when I was told that, I was actually thrilled knowing that I'm actually still part of history as long as I keep it going. And because of the small business tax deduction, I didn't get to buy equipment or um, uh, hire hundreds of employees, but um, and I was a actually able to continue to sustain the business that I have because it has been rough for us, only because of the business that these gentlemen do, the people, their employees weren't coming into my store. So with those breaks and those things and buying the equipment and applying the jobs, I actually get to sell them their milk, bread, eggs, and cheese, and I'm kind of happy with that. That's good. So <laughs> I do thank you for that, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Mr. President, my name is Vic Poma. I'm father of eight, uh, 20 grandchildren. I'm vice president of Universal Plumbing and Heating in Las Vegas, Nevada. Company been, been in business for 55 years. Uh, with the tax cuts, we were with tax reform, we were able to give all our employees bonuses. We've bought new ver, uh, new vehicles, purchased complete uh, new computers, uh, iPads for the field, uh, you know, uh, to make us more profitable. Uh, We've been able to reinvest in our company, and I want to thank you for the support to the American people, American companies. I appreciate it, and uh, thank, you. thank you, and stay your course. I will. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is David Krasetsky. I'm with Universal Plumbing from Las Vegas, Nevada. And I don't know if you remember, but we met one time during the caucusing at the high school when you went there. Uh, I got to shake your hand and get a picture with you and everything. You're very personable and I, I can't stop talking about you. Well, that's nice. <laughs> I hope that doesn't change. <laughs> Thank I'm, you. A, I'm a third generation plumber, uh, born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I've been working 25 years in the trades to help ensure the health and safety of a nation uh, through our plumbing systems. I also have been teaching 12 years in our apprenticeship program, our uh, PhDC uh, National Apprenticeship Program. I can, I've been thinking about it. I can remember three years ago, we couldn't find enough apprentices to fill our class. Now we don't have enough, uh, a big enough building for the amount of guys that want to come work in the trades. So what you've done with the... What you've done with the tax and jobs reform has really boosted our economy in Vegas, and we saw it overnight uh, go from nothing to you know 60 miles an hour. It's it's unbelievable, and uh, without that, I don't know where we would be at. Uh, we've gone from 15 to 35 employees in our company, and from 30 apprentices to over 85 apprentices That's in our program. Uh, and without the trades, and you know, without the infrastructure. Uh, the country wouldn't be possible, and we want to thank you for that. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, as much as I love to serve with you, he's offering $50 an hour now in his uh, plumbing trade. Uh, they start low, but they end up high, so congratulations. We had a little conversation there. But I am very grateful, very privileged to be sitting here before you and then in support of the President, President Trump's pro-growth policies. He promised uh, a very comprehensive package, pro-growth package, as Secretary Mnuchin has indicated, which included not only the tax reductions or tax cuts, but also the regulatory reforms, as well as reciprocal trading, trade agreements, and I think you have delivered on all of them and then some. And so uh, I'm, I'm here to applaud everyone here at this round table that have done so well um, and that uh, are, just, are just starting out because this is our only second year in this process. So thank you very much, President. Much, uh, good luck in your new position. We're going to do fantastic. So to the great people of 
Minnesota. Uh, we're working with your local government, who unfortunately is opposing us and you on this. The pipeline, you know about the pipeline and the pipelines. Uh, very important that we get that approved. I think it's something that will uh, bring down your costs and bring down the costs for the whole country. For some reason, uh, Democrats don't like pipelines. They don't like energy. Uh, but we're working on it, and uh, you're going to be very happy with the result. Uh, the iron range is so important, and that is really big, and that's in final stages, and it's already moving along uh, beyond anything anybody could have even anticipated. It was a closed subject, and that's good for you, but it's great for the nation because you have the best there is in the world sitting there, right there, and, and a lot of people going back to work. So that's very important. And. <laughs> And again, you see what's happening at the border, and you know how unfairly you've been treated as a state, and you've really been treated unfairly. And I just want to let you know it's all changing. We're doing very well. We have to uh, — uh, it would be a lot easier if Congress would get together and the Democrats would agree to get rid of these loopholes, these horrible and foolish loopholes, uh, catch and release and chain migration. And visa lottery, you take people out of a lottery, you bring them into the country. What do you think? I mean, who do you think these countries are giving us? They're not giving us their finest, that I can tell you. So it's just insane. And, of course, uh, asylum. Asylum is a ridiculous situation. People come in, they read a line from a lawyer that a lawyer hands them out online. They read it. You look at some of these people, you want protection from them. And they're saying, we need protection from our country. In the meantime, they're carrying their country's flag thousands, 2,000 miles, walking up the journey. Uh, it's a big con job. That's what it is. And in Congress — and Congress has to get smart. And honestly, I, I, when I say Congress, I can't blame the Republicans. The Republicans want to do it, but you need the votes of the Democrats. Uh, you need 60 votes in the Senate. And uh, we're a little bit short in the House. We can retake the House. I think over this issue, I think we can retake. Look, as soon as we do, we're going to get this straightened out. So I just want to thank — it's been an incredible experience for me being in Minnesota. I have so many friends here anyway. But uh, I just want to thank the people of Minnesota and everybody for making this day possible. I mean, you have to see outside to believe what's going on. Uh, this was supposed to be a little roundtable, as they call it. And uh, this is wonderful, but you have to see what's happening outside. You wouldn't believe it. And it's beautiful. I see American flags waving all over. I see everybody. You know, the right? — And a lot of the — a lot of the public doesn't really get the picture because, you know, you could have 10,000 people pro and two people against. And those two people will make the front page of the papers. Why are you against the President? But everybody gets it. Everybody gets what's going on. There's a great movement in this country, and it started with that very special day in November. Remember that day? Was that a great day? November. November 2016. And uh, we actually did very well in 18 also. We won the Senate. We got extra seats in the Senate. Uh, we had a lot of victories, uh, Ohio and Georgia and Florida and Oklahoma and lots of states and uh, the governorships. And uh, I, I went out and campaigned a lot, and we had a very, very high record of success wherever we went. Uh, couldn't campaign for everybody in the House. I'm sorry, Tom, but the ones we campaigned for, they did very well, generally speaking, I guess. And uh, we're going to have an election coming up. I think that that's going to be something uh, — it's going to be really a carry forward from what we did in 16. It's going to be a great carry forward, and it's going to be, uh, I think, also a very, very special day. You know, we had the theme, Make America Great Again. That's what we've done. We've made America great again. We're not only winning again, as Tom said, but we're respected again as a nation. We're respected again. And all of these countries, including allies, people that I like very much, uh, they I say, how did, how did this happen? How were you allowed to do this to our country? You look at trade deals where we lose on every one of them, practically every one of them. There's not a trade deal we have that's any good. And 
uh, 25 billion here, 60 billion here, with China 375 billion loss a year. Nobody even believes it. We rebuilt China, just so you understand. We rebuilt China. They did a hell of a job, but they did it using our money. And how they could have allowed that to happen, our previous representatives. And I'm not just talking about President Obama. I'm talking about many of them. How they could have allowed that to happen to our country is disgraceful. But we're turning it around, and we're in the throes and the, you know, really pretty final stages. We'll see what happens. Look, we're going to win either way. We're either going to win by getting a deal, and we also win if we don't get a deal, because we do other things. But uh, that we were put in this position. And North Korea, that's moving along. You know, when I came in, we were — there were missiles going all over the place. There was nuclear testing. Mountains were being moved over a little bit. Mountains. They said, boy, that's terrible what's happening over there. They thought it was earthquakes. I said, that's not an earthquake. That's called nuclear testing. But I have a very good relationship with Kim Jong-un. He just said the other day he looks forward to more talk. Talk is okay. Talk is okay. They've been talking for a long time. You know, it's interesting. We've been talking now. We were in Singapore, what, a year ago? And so we've been doing this for a pretty short period of time. Uh, they've been talking for many, many years, for decades. And uh, we've done a great job there. It's interesting when the media said, it's not moving fast enough. Well, what about the last 40 years? Nobody talks about that. <laughs> for 40 years, they don't talk about it. With me, it's like nine months. Why is it moving? I don't want it to move fast. It doesn't have to move fast. Right now, it's moving along just perfectly. And uh, we have a uh, good relationship. The sanctions are on. We got our hostages back. We got our remains are coming back. And there's a lot of constructive things going on. And uh, you could look at many other things. Middle East, we took over 100 percent of the caliphate, 100 percent ISIS, the ISIS caliphate. And when I took over two and a half years ago, you look at that map and you see the ISIS was all over the place. And you never say you won because you have a couple of whack jobs go blow up a store and people get killed. They blow up something else, people get killed. They're crazy. They're wacky. They're bad people. And we're going to make sure it happens as little as possible. But you can never claim victory because you always have a nut job someplace that's going to do something, okay? I don't want to be in a position, oh, he said 100 percent. Well, we do have. We have 100 percent of the land, of the area, 100 percent. We took it over very quickly, very quickly. But you always have somebody out there, so we don't want to be put in the position where we say 100 percent, and then somebody gets killed by some mad maniac. So I will just tell you, Minnesota, I'm with you 1,000 percent, not 100, but 1,000 uh, percent. And I think you would say, even Minnesota would say, more importantly, I'm with this country a thousand percent, okay? Because we love our country. And, and great things are happening. And I just want to thank everybody for being here today. Very special day for me. I hope everything works out well. We all want to extend our regards and our hopes. And uh, God bless you to uh, Paris and to France, what they're going through. It's just you'll go back and you'll see what's, uh, what's happening. It's a, a very, very sad thing. I've never quite — I mean, you, you take a look at this. This is one of the true catastrophes. And uh, hopefully, they did better than they were doing when I left the plane. But it was not a good situation with respect to Notre Dame Cathedral. Thank you all very much. It's a great honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much.